I'm going to show you perhaps the most important thing you need to learn as a software developer besides actually learning to code. So let me start off by saying a few years ago, or more than a few years ago, I was working with a very senior developer at a small startup, and we were pairing together every day, meaning he was typing, I was typing, we were using the same keyboard at the same job, and he was teaching me basically how to get into the code base that they were using. Anyway, he saw me bumbling around the keyboard and he got so frustrated. He's like, hey man, look, before we can go any further, I need you to like learn some keyboard shortcuts so you're not just like doing this thing where you're looking at a massive code base and trying to find something. Using these really terrible tactics. And I, I got kind of embarrassed about it, but it ultimately taught me that, yeah, you know what? I need to get a little bit better at using my own tools. And he really taught me the value of using your own tools. So what I'm gonna do today is walk you through how to use VS Code like a gosh dang pro. Because a lot of you out here are doing this. You're looking for files, you're looking for words, you're, you're copying and pasting things all weird, and it just annoys people. And uh, no, no harm, right? You know, I mean, what's the big deal, right? But think about this. Using an extra 30 seconds every single time you do a certain task, 10 seconds every single time you do a certain task, do this over 30 years. I'm no mathematician but I think you're probably wasting at least six months to years of your life looking for files the wrong way. Let's uh, prevent that. But seriously, you should get really good at using your tools. It'll make you a better programmer, make you more faster, efficient, and it will help you as you're pairing with people so you're at least not a burden at the very least. And you should just know how to use your tools. As a developer, it's really important to know how to use your tools. It is going to make you a more productive and efficient developer. Anyway, let's jump into it. I'm going to show you some very, very basic things of how to use VS Code that a lot of you just aren't using based on my work with students that I've mentored, junior developers, senior developers that I've mentored over the years, and I'm just blown away how archaic their skills are. Anyway, you're in a VS Code project. I just opened up this one. This is Graph Commerce from um, you know some Next.js project. It's really big. I've never used it before, and I'm trying to navigate the project. Um, first of all, if you're trying to find a file here, like maybe you you know that in an XJS app, the app dot you know tsx file is the entry point, and I would maybe do this. How did I do that? I'm using a Mac, but you can look at these same keyboard shortcuts, and we're going to look at how to make your own keyboard shortcuts shortly. You could use Command P to open up the uh, file explorer, and it has fuzzy matching. So if I'm looking for something like app, you see it comes up with things that match that mostly, and then tsx pages. Cool, I'm there. Now let's go into this app and see what's really going on in this app. First of all, let's get this app running. I'm gonna press control, back tick. Back tick, control opens up the integrated terminal. And now I can goof around in here. I can do, I don't know, NPM start or something like that. See what happens. See it starting here. I'm gonna go into, let's see, there's a GraphQL provider, there's a global head. So now I've explored how to one, find files without doing a search here. This is a pretty time intensive way to search for a particular file in a folder. If you kind of know the name, it's better to do command P and then start looking around like theme. Maybe we want to look at theme. Maybe there, this is an e-commerce app. I bet there's maybe a cart. Well, you know, there is a cart. I can go to the cart pages here and check things out. What if I'm really interested in where one of these particular components is coming from? I'm like, oh, look at this. It has um, a layout overlay and a product list renderer. Where is that coming from? Um, I could do this, command P and go to product, you know, list renderer, which is okay. A better way would be to hold command and click on that to take me to that exact place within VS Code. Great, right? Hold command, click it. It will take you to the file where it is created. Cool. So now I see this. I got product list item. I can do the same thing here. I can go, I can travel all around here and really go back to see where is this stuff coming from? How can I use it? How can I update it? Where, where, where is this place laid out, right? And I say, okay, overlay area keys. Now, maybe I'm really interested in the instances where we use overlay area keys. I don't know. Now, if I'm looking for a particular word, function, sentence, or something throughout uh, an entire um, code base, I would do shift command F. And I can take overlay keys and I can look everywhere for overlay keys. I see it's only one place. Great. Maybe your manager says, you know what? I want you to change product list item skeleton um, everywhere in the code base. And you're saying, oh no, now I got to change a hundred, a thousand instances of this thing. Let's see something that is used a lot like this. Um, 
Maybe they're saying, you know what? We're using MUI material, but we don't want to. We want to use a new library, but luckily the imports are the same. We want you to change every single instance of MUI material in this whole code base. You could be bumbling around for, I don't know, an hour doing this. Maybe, you know, probably very likely you could go through each one, copy paste, and that's lame, right? You could do better than that, right? So what you can do instead is do this. You can replace MUI material. Oops. Place at MUI material with MUI uh, not material. <laughs> Evil us. Okay. And now we're going to place that everywhere. And it says, do you want to, you want to really replace 72 occurrences with MUI, not material? We're like, yeah, do it. Now we're screwed. Anyway, now we can also change it back too. So if we want to change it back. We could change it back to that and MUI material. And now we're back where we started from in the first place. Click that. Bingo. We replaced it back. That's a much easier way to do it. Now I'm going to show you a couple other little things you can do as well. Let's, uh, when you want to do something within a file, maybe you're updating many, many of the same thing. There's a better way to do that. So maybe we want to change container here. We see a couple instances of container. Press Command D. You hold Command and you tap D. It will go to every instance of container and you can edit them in one go. Containering. Container. Big. I don't know. Container small. Whatever you want. You can change it up by doing Command, tapping D to highlight every single instance and then update them together. Saves you a ton of time, right? Now here's some lesser known tricks. Some of these things are like kind of like, okay, this is just kind of basic command stuff. This one kind of blew my mind, which I thought was always pretty interesting. Maybe you want to, maybe you have like some sort of component here. Component or some, some markup that you have, H1 cart, cart page, and you realize it's not in the right place. You could do this, Command X and then Command V and put it somewhere else, or you could highlight it like this. Hold Option and click down or up in order to move it throughout the page. This is actually, I find, really, really helpful. A couple other small you know, ones that are worth some honorable mentions is how to navigate between uh, across lines. So maybe you want to navigate to, let's say, the second uh, question mark in here. You can hold Option and press the arrow key one way or the other, and it will go over full lines of code or full um, words at a time, rather than going one, two, three, four, five, little, little stuff, right? You could also hold command and press one way or the other, left or right, and then go to the end of a line or the beginning of a line. I like to hold shift option. If I want to just begin highlighting things like one word at a time, that's really helpful. Or if I want to highlight the whole thing, shift command, there we go. And to end this off, simple stuff, right? But you'd be shocked how many people just don't know this stuff. And maybe you don't either. It actually took me a lot longer than I'd even like to admit to learn some of these really basic things. Um, now, I've showed you some shortcuts that kind of everybody knows, but what about your own shortcuts? For example, I like to be able to toggle my um, nav bar or my explorer by just doing command one. Command one to open it, command one to close it. Saves me time. The more time I can keep my hands off of my mouse pad, the better to me. And I think that most people agree. That's the reason why tools like Vim are really popular. If you watch guys like the Primogen, they're flying all around the terminal in their Vim or Emacs or whatever. I'm not a big fan of those things. It just never took the time to learn them. And I know enough to be dangerous, but not enough to really go all the way in. Um, I haven't really gone all the way into VS Code either, but I do know enough to be dangerous here and enough to be efficient. So when I'm working with people and having to find things, it's a lot faster. And when you're under the gun, which you often are as a software developer, when you're having to fix a critical issue, something big comes up that you need to get done, you don't want to be bumbling around. You want to save those precious minutes. And honestly, it's just going to make your life a little better. Anyway, let's make our own one. So Command uh, P. So I do Command P to open up my Explorer here. I do Shift uh, and Carrot. I call it a Carrot, Shift Carrot. And we can go to open keyboard shortcuts. So you can type in preferences or something like that. You want to get to open keyboard shortcuts. Here is, as, as you probably could tell by now, it's your keyboard shortcuts. So if you want to add or update a certain 
shortcut here to do something, add it in here. There's all sorts of cool stuff. So for me, like open uh, file explorer or something. Uh, let's see. File explorer. I encourage you to check this one out. There's one to delete a file, to move files to the trash, to, I mean, some of this is really basic, right? But I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff you could interrupt. So copy and paste. I definitely don't want to touch these ones. But yeah, there's something that you do a lot, like maybe there's a integrated terminal, the integrated terminal. Um, so this one is command space to open it up. Oh, look at that. And I have mine command backtick. So we could change this to uh, let's 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 rewrite it. Command backtick. And it says, hey, there's already an existing command with this. So you can go to that existing command and you can think, oh, do I really want to overwrite that or not? Hope that was really helpful for you to use. Definitely play around with this. And there's all sorts of cool shortcuts, tricks, ways to make yourself more efficient and make yourself a better developer that people often don't think about. We think it's all about writing code, but everybody uses VS Code. And if you're going to use it for potentially decades <laughs> or even a year or two of your life, why not be good at it? Anyway, hope that's helpful and I'll see you around.